خونه بازی By 9.40 we should finish it, inshallah. By 9.40 we should finish it, inshallah. So stay with us, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan, jazakumullah. Allah will do what you Is it okay? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahir rahmanir Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Amma ba'd. Allahumma salli ala muhammadi wa ala ali muhammad. Kama sallayta ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim. Innaka hamid al-majid. Allahumma barik ala muhammadi wa ala ali muhammad. كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا Respected brothers, elders, youngsters and my beloved sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Alhamdulillah, Thumma Alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala gave us the ability to sit in His house. Always, house of Allah is better than our houses. Spending little time in the house of Allah is better than spending whole night in our own houses. Because masjid is house of Allah. And it's holy, it's pure, it's got full of angels and full of pious people around you. So you don't know because of whom, because of which person your sins are getting forgiven. Because of which person your du'as are getting accepted. That's why the pious people, they always used to stay around for pious people, next to pious people. And masjid is the best place to be around pious people. May Allah Ta'ala keep us, our entire life of dunya and akhirah, around pious people, next to pious people. Say, Amin. Ya so, this tafsir, we are sitting here today for, it is Qur'an. Tafsir is Qur'an. Without tafsir, you won't understand Qur'an. Without tafsir, you won't understand Qur'an. You can read whole life, but when you understand it, you get different taste. You enjoy it more when you recite this verse, because you know what it, mean, what it means. So that's why you always should pay attention to sit down and understand the Qur'an. May Allah Ta'ala bless us with the true understanding of Qur'an. Say Amen. Ya Allah. Amen. So today's verses will be Ayah number 35 to Ayah 37. Sorry, Ayah 35, yeah, 35, 36 and 37. Three verses of Surah to Ali Imran, inshaAllah. Yes, stay with me. Allah Ta'ala will reward you. Allah Ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذ قالت امرأة عمران رب إني نذرت لك ما في بطني محررا رب إني نظرت لك ما في بطني محررا فتقبل مني إنك أنت السميع العليم فلما وضعتها قالت رب إني وضعتها أنثى والله أعلم بما وضعت وليس الذكر كالأنثى وإني سميتها مريم وإني أعيذها بك وذريتها من الشيطان الرجيم فتقبلها ربها بقبول حسن وأنبتها نباتا حسنا وكفلها زكريا كلما دخل عليها زكريا المحراب وجد عندها رزقا قال يا مريم أنا لك هذا قالت هو من عند الله إن الله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب صدق الله العظيم Respected brothers, elders, youngsters and my beloved sisters Allah Ta'ala says in this Quran, in this, these verses Allah Ta'ala says the story of Ummu Maryam the story of Ummu Maryam, not Maryam herself alone. It's the story coming from Maryam's mom. Okay, Allah Ta'ala addresses her as Imra'atu Imran. Allah Ta'ala 
addresses Umm Maryam, Maryam's mom, as Imra'atu Imran. Imra'atu Imran yani Imran's wife. Imra'a, Imra'a yani lady. Imran's lady. Means Imran's wife. Okay? So who was Imran? Yes, mashallah. Isa alayhi salatu wasalam's granddad. Isa alayhi salatu wasalam's granddad. Maryam's son is Isa. And Maryam's dad is Imran. Got it now? Yeah, full understanding? So Imran is Maryam's dad. And we know who Maryam is. Very famous person. So Allah Ta'ala revealed a surah in the name of Maryam. Right? Allah Ta'ala revealed a surah in the name of Maryam. Subhanallah. And Allah Ta'ala also revealed a surah in the name of al Imran. Imran's family. Subhanallah. So Imran's family gets one surah, Maryam gets another surah. Now imagine how special that family, subhanAllah, very special family, isn't it? Very, very special family. There is no surah in the name of Alu Muhammad. Is there a surah called Alu Muhammad? No, there is a surah called Muhammad. There is a surah called Nuh. There is a surah called Yusuf. There is a surah called, uh, what is it? Uh, Hud. For example, Hud, Hud alayhi salam, Surah Yunus, Yunus alayhi salam's name. But there is no a single surah comes in the name of a family of a prophet. There is no surah called Surah to Alu Ibrahim, Surah to Alu Yunus, Surah to Alu Hud, Surah to Alu Salih, Surah to Alu Muhammad, Surah to Alu Nur, Surah to Alu Adam. No. There is no single surah in the name of the family of a prophet. But there is a surah in the name of family of Imran. Subhanallah. Why did Allah Ta'ala bless Imran so much? And why did Allah Ta'ala like Imran so much? Answer to that. Imran wasn't a prophet, by the way. Remember this. This Imran wasn't a prophet. About Luqman. You know Surah Luqman. About Luqman alayhi salam, there is an opinion. Differences of opinion. Some scholars said he was a prophet. Some scholars said he wasn't a prophet. There are both sides. But about Imran, majority of the scholars, or almost all the scholars, they said Imran wasn't a prophet. So if Imran wasn't a prophet, then why is he so famous in the eye of Allah? Why is he so special in the eye of Allah? Do you want to know this? Yes. Yes. Because he is to fear Allah. Because he is to fear Allah. So my dear friends, when you fear Allah, you become more special in the eye of Allah than the scholars. When you fear Allah, someone might be Ali, yeah? But he doesn't act upon on his knowledge. But you are not Ali. Whatever you learned, you act upon that. And you fear Allah, you worship Allah. Allah Ta'ala will value you more over him. Did you understand? Because whatever you learned, you respect that much. That's why sometimes I say, our elders, you know, our parents, grandparents, they didn't know much. But whatever they knew, they respected that. Am I right, uncle? They respected that. They didn't know much. They didn't know what is right, what is wrong. They didn't do any research. The Imam said, oh, do it this way. They did it this way. Muslim said, oh, it should be this way. Do it this way. They did it. Whatever they knew, they respected that and they believed in Allah and they feared Allah. Yeah? So sometimes they might be ahead of us in Jannah because of their loyalty, because of their sincerity. You understand? Because of their ikhlas. So Imran was what this person who wasn't a prophet, but who had full of sincerity in his heart, full of ikhlas, full of devotion, full of love, full of respect for Allah Ta'ala. MashaAllah, may Allah make us all and make our families like the family of Imran. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So Allah Ta'ala says, إِذْ قَالَتِ امْرَأَةُ عِمْرَانَ Oh my dear Prophet, remember when Imran's wife said, what did she say? She said, Rabbi inni nadhartu laka ma fi batni muharrara. Oh Allah, whatever in my stomach, I keep it free for your religion. Muharrara, hurr. Yeah, free. Free for your religion means I'm not going to tie this child with dunya. This child in my belly, it is free for your religion, 
doesn't have to earn me any dunya, doesn't have to study about dunya, all the child will serve your religion. This is what she meant. Nazartu laka, nazartu, nazara yanduru, yani, what does nazara yanduru mean? To vow. To vow. Do we know what vowing is? What is vowing, you know what? Promising. Yeah, you make a promise. So you say to yourself, I vow I will give 100 pounds to the path of Allah. So that's a promise. You have to fulfill that. If you don't fulfill it, then you have to do kafara. And kafara is fasting, isn't it? Yeah. So vowing is allowed in Islam. You can vow. Anyone can make a vow. Vow means a pledge. Anyone can make a pledge. Anyone can make a promise and say, I will do this. And when they say it, they have to do it. Okay? Sometimes vow can be conditional. Sometimes vow can be inconditional. Conditional vows are like, for example, I'm going to the interview, job interview. If I get this job from my first salary, I will donate 100 pounds to the masjid. You made a promise to yourself. Listen, you went for interview and in your mind you say, if I get this job, I will donate from my first salary 100 pounds to the masjid. That's a vow. It's in between you and Allah, a promise made. Yeah, a contract made in between you and Allah. And you have to fulfill the contract. Okay? You said to yourself, this is my GCSE exam. If I pass my GCSE exam, I will pray 1000 rakat nafal prayer. For example, you said to yourself, then you have to pray 1000 rakat. <coughs> if, you, if you passed it. Yeah? You got everything, good marks. You weren't expecting, for example, eight, grade, grade eight. And you got eight in everything. Maths, English, science, everything. Then you have to do 1,000 rakah because you made a deal with Allah. Yeah? So this is called vowing. This is called making a pledge or making a promise in between you and Allah and you have to fulfill it. So she made a vow in between her and Allah. She said, what about in my stomach? رَبِّ إِنِّي نَظَرْتُ لَكَ مَا فِي بَطْنِ مَا مَا means whatever. Now it's a boy or it's a girl, it doesn't matter. She doesn't know. Those days there wasn't a scanning machines to see after three months or after five months, what is it? Is he a boy or is he a girl? Nowadays they can check, isn't it? Nowadays they can scan and check what's in the belly. But those days it wasn't. So now she said, whatever in my belly that is free for the religion of Allah. مِنِّي And she said, oh Allah, accept it from me. Here, you have to ask Allah to accept. Just vowing, just making a promise is not enough. Whenever you make a promise, you say, Allah, accept it from me. Means, I made this vow, I made this intention, I made this pledge, I made this promise between me and you. Allah, accept this and allow me to reach my goal. Allow me to get to my goal. Do you understand? So you have to ask Allah to accept it. So she said, Allah accept it from me. Allah Ta'ala, and then she said, Innaka anta alim. Allah indeed. You are the one who listens to everything and you are the one who knows everything. Most knowledgeable. Most strong in hearing everything. Means even it's in my heart, my husband probably doesn't know that I made the promise, but you know it that I made the promise in my heart. So you accept it, you heard it, and you know that's in my heart. This is Ali, you are knowledgeable of what's in my heart. SubhanAllah. So now imagine how strong believer she was. So Imran's wife was a very pious woman, very strong believer. So Imran was a very strong believing man as well. Allah Ta'ala loved them so much because these two people, husband and wife, they used to do the work of the Anbiya. They were an Anbiya, but they used to do the work of Anbiya. Nowadays, you will find people like them. Let me tell you. There are some people, they are not scholars, but they are doing the job of the scholars. You will see them 24-7 busy with the da'wah work. Have you seen anyone like that? If you concentrate in your own area, you will see people like that. 24-7, they don't care about dunya. They worried about the ummah. 
24-7 they are worried about the Ummah. How can that da'wah goes to Ummah? How can Ummah can benefit and wake up and learn their deen and benefit from their deen? That's their worry. That's all they worry about. They pray making dua constantly for the Ummah. They crying for the Ummah. They inviting the Ummah. They helping the Ummah. Sometimes they getting things out from their own pocket and helping the Ummah. These are the people who are like the family of Imran. Yeah, so be like those. Always have the concern of Ummah in your heart. Are we all ready for this? Yeah, concern for the Ummah in your heart. Inshallah. This is the concern Prophet Sallallahu came with. And all the Anbiya came with. A concern for the Ummah. Yeah, I don't want to go to Jannah alone. I want to go to Jannah with my nation. This was the worry of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this was the message of the Sahaba. That I don't want to go to Jannah alone. I want to take everyone to Jannah. And once the Ummah of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam revived these feelings in their heart, trust me, everyone will come back to Deen again. Today, people are not in Deen. Why? Because everyone became selfish. Everyone became selfish. Everyone minding their own business. No one cares about no one. No one cares about no one. Look at this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He goes, I feel like going and burning the houses down of those people who don't come to the masjid for jama'ah. Why is that? Is it because hatred or is it because caring? Why did he say this? Because he, he hates them or he cares about them? Ah. So you have to understand the deeper meaning of this sentence. He goes, I feel like going and burning those houses down where people are living, but they're not coming to the masjid to do the jama'ah, pray the salah with the jama'ah. Why? Because he cares about them. He knows they're going to go to Jahannam. They're going to go to Jahannam because if they don't stay with the ummah, don't learn the deen, don't follow the deen, shaitan will take them away slowly, slowly. Yeah? First you will see he's missing fajr. Next you will see he's missing Fajr and Zuhar. Next you will see Fajr, Zuhar, Asr, he doesn't come. Next you will see he doesn't come any of the prayers. Next you will see he comes once a, once a week. Next you will see, you don't even see him for whole month in the masjid. Next, what's going to happen? You will see him only on Eid. Then you will say, brother, haven't seen you for the last whole year. He goes, Bayab, trust me man, lots of work, busyness, dunya. Do you see? And for his mistake, we all will be responsible because we didn't care about him and we didn't try to bring him back. Do you see? Ummah is Ummah as long as they are like this. That's called Ummah. All of them together. When they go like that, that's not Ummah anymore. They, everyone became on their own. So Ummah always like this. وَاَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا Tafarraku, hold on to the rope of Allah like this. Hold it. Don't separate. La tafarraku. Don't separate. This is tafarraq. Separating all of them. So you have to stay together. And that will happen when you have the worry for the ummah in your hearts, my friend. May Allah Ta'ala create the worry of ummah in our hearts. Say Amin. So she said, Fataqabbal minni wa Allah, accept this da'wah from me, accept this dua from me. Indeed, you are the one who listens to everything. Indeed, you are the one who knows everything what's in our hearts. فَلَمَّا وَضَعَتْهَا قَالَتْ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَضَعْتُهَا أُنْثَى When she gave birth, she realized she gave birth to a girl. And she said, Allah, I gave birth to a girl. Means I got a girl now. وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا وَضَعَتْ It's not that Allah doesn't know what she gave birth to. Allah knows everything, isn't it? Yeah, because she just said in the previous ayah, Samyun Ali, you hear, you know everything. So Allah Ta'ala knows what she gave birth to. But just to add extra, uh, what's it called? Uh, to emphasize it more, Allahu a'lamu bima wabawat. It's not that she doesn't believe, that she believes that Allah doesn't know. She knows Allah knows that she gave birth to a girl. Allahu a'lamu bima wabawat. Allah knows that she gave birth to a girl. But she is just shocked she gave birth to the girl. Why? Because she was expecting what's, whatever in her belly, Allah Ta'ala will send that kid as a boy and the boy will carry on with the legacy of the parents. 
Parents' legacy what? Da'wah. Remember that. Parents' legacy was Da'wah. Imran and Imran's wife, they do Da'wah work. So they wanted someone to carry on with the legacy. Every parent, they want their child to carry on with the legacy. Businessman, he wants a child to be another businessman. A king wants a child to become the next king. Am I right? So everyone, they think this way. So Imran and Imran's wife's thinking, well, Imran's wife's main thinking was that I'm going to have a boy and boy will carry on with our legacy of the Da'wah. That's why she was a bit shocked that Allah Ta'ala gave her a girl. But anyway, let's see. وَلَيْسَ ذَكَرُكَ الْأُنْثَى She's saying, oh Allah, boys are not like girls. Means boys are brave, brave. They go out even in the night. They can do da'wah work even in the darkness. But girls, no. They need little bit security. And as always, they need little bit security. And those days, especially, they needed extra security. Because those days was time of jahiliyyah, where people used, never used to respect the women. People never used to value the women. Do you see? So she said, لَيْسَ ذَكَرُ كَالْأُنْثَى Boys are not like girls. And also, boys have different qualities in them, different strength, different maturity. Yes, girls also have different strength and different maturity. So, as if she's saying, if I had a boy, it would have been better. But obviously, whatever you have given, I'm happy with that. Then she says, وَإِنِّي سَمَّيْتُهَا مَرْيَمْ Allah, whatever you have given, I'm happy with that. And I've named her Maryam. Subhanallah. وَإِنِّي أُعِيضُهَا بِكَ وَذُرِّيَّتَهَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Wa Allah, and I seek safety in you, refuge in you for her and for her generation, for her children. Safety from the shaitan, the cursed. So that's another thing. <coughs> if she wasn't happy, she wouldn't have said that. She would have said, I'm upset. Why did you give me a girl? No, she wasn't upset. She was shocked, but she accepted whatever Allah has given her. Amen. Yeah, that's one thing we learned from Maryam's mom. That whatever Allah Ta'ala blessed you with, be happy. Yeah? Yalla, Hufaz. No Hafiz here? Allah Ta'ala gives girls to whoever He wants and gives boys to whoever He wants. Today, someone was telling me a story. Yeah, there is a family, they got 11 brothers. 11 brothers in one family and two sisters. Can you imagine? It is Allah. Allah Ta'ala might give someone lots of girls and less, less boys. And someone will have lots of boys and less girls. Someone will not have nothing. Someone will have full of boys. Someone might have full of girls. It is Allah. We don't decide this. Women don't decide this. In some culture, if the women doesn't give birth to boys, they, di they divorce the women. And, and some other cultures, if the women don't give birth, they divorce the women. Both are wrong. Both are wrong. It's not in her control. It's not in her control. It is Allah who gives whatever He wants to give. Okay? So strengthen your Iman, my friends. Keep your faith in Allah. If you get married and you see your wife not giving birth, no problem. Sarah, Sarah, have you heard of Sarah? Radiallahu anha, the wife of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, didn't give birth until she was about 80 years old. Sarah, radiallahu ta'ala anha, wife of Ibrahim alayhi salam, didn't give birth until she was about 80 years old. Can you imagine? Ibrahim didn't lose hope. Ibrahim alayhi salam didn't lose hope. Yeah? When messengers came and gave the glad tidings, she said, <coughs> she said, uh, what did she say? Aalidu, Aalidu, will I give birth? Wa ana ajuzun, wa al amin. Old lady, wa hada baali shaykhan, and my husband is an old man. She said, Aalidu, wa ana ajuzun, wa hada baali shaykhan. Will I give birth when I'm old? My husband is an old man, give birth? How? So sometime, 
your sins and your science might fade. Allah's science is awake. Busy. Allah's power is awake. So do not do any discrimination. Do not do any wrongdoings and misjudgment and oppression on your wives. If she doesn't give birth, it is in the hukum of Allah. Allah controls. So those young men are not married. This is a lesson for you in the future. Once you get married and your wife doesn't give birth, you're going to have a lot of pressure from your mom. And more from your sisters, from your aunts. They will create a lot of pressure and they will say, why didn't you divorce her? Hey, why didn't you divorce her? She doesn't give birth. Get married to someone else. No, that's oppression. Oppression, zulm. You cannot divorce someone for not giving birth. Also, you cannot divorce someone for giving birth to a girl. In some culture, giving birth to a girl is a crime. So all those bad things has been wiped off after Messenger والسلام, came to with Quran. All those bad things gone. We don't revive those bad things. If anyone revives it, we put mud on it. it means we bury it and we say, no, that's not culture of Islam. Yeah, and we always strengthen the culture of Islam. Okay, inshallah. So let's move on. <coughs> So she said, I've accepted whatever you've given me, I've accepted, I've named her Maryam, and I seek safety and security in you, O oh Allah, for her and for her children. And this is something very important for all the parents to make dua for their children. Always you should say, Allahumma inni u'iduhum bika min ash shaytanir rajim. Oh Allah, I put my children in your safety from the shaytanir rajim. Can all the parents say this? If you can't say in Arabic, no problem, say in English. Say in Bengali, Allah, I'm a bachintre of nurse security in Mazatuila, of nurse safety in Mazatuila. I'm not my baby, I'm not with the person, I'm not with the Allah to Mara Allah Allah Makwari. Allah, I'm not for it, Mara Allah Allah. Oh, Hanu Buddha. Oh, Hanu Huiba. Allah, I put my child in your safety. Can we all say this? All the parents. Whenever your child is getting out of the house, going to work, going to school, going to college, going to uni, every parent should say this, Allah, I put my child in your safety. Please look after him. Can we all say this, inshallah? Sure. From today, it is parents' responsibility. Next, she said, فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ Allah Ta'ala accepted her, accepted her with قَبُولِ حَسَنَ قَبُولِ حَسَنَ means an acceptance with a good acceptance. In a good way, with goodness, one is accepting, okay, <coughs> give it here, go. And one is accepting, you take it, you look after it. You look after it. Someone was giving me, get sharing a story, story today, sharing a story with me today, was saying that someone gave 500 to a business. It's a big business. They opened a big takeaway, yeah, or something green. And someone said, okay, I'll give 500 to your business, will you take it? And that person accepted that. And not only accepted that with a sad face, accepted that and yearly started giving profit based on that 500 whatever comes. SubhanAllah. So I'm saying that they didn't take it as a, oh, you're only giving 500? People give, does, do people give 500 in investment nowadays? But they didn't see it that way. They saw it in that way that someone tried to be part of us. Let them help. Let's help them. Let's help them. So this is Allah Ta'ala doing qubul hasana, accepting it and giving profit. And look at this profit. Allah Ta'ala says, وَأَنْبَدَهَا نَبَادًا حَسَنًا Allah Ta'ala grew her up in a better growing. So better growing only happens when something been accepted happily. Otherwise, how is the business going to grow? How is the 500 going to give profit? If you don't accept it properly. So he sex accepted it, put it in the business, and now profit's coming in and profit's been given up. So Allah Ta'ala grew her in a nice way. Yeah, full caring, full everything. Zakaria and handed her over to Zakaria alayhi salatu Why? Why Zakaria? Why not anyone else? When the child being kept for the path of Allah, this child should be handed under a shed. Remember what thing. A lot of us, we say, I promise or I make a vow in between Allah and me that when my child grows up, I will send, I will make the child hafiz. Brother, good promise, mashallah. But when you say, I will make my child a hafiz, when the child 
is able to read the Quran, it should give the child under the supervision of Imam, under the care of Imam. And it should take the child and put the child on Imam's head and say, Imam, this is a student from today. Until this child doesn't become Hafiz and Alim, I'm not taking this kid away from you. If child needs 100 years, keep him 100 years with you. This is called, you freed that child for Allah. And if you give a condition, no, within one year make my child Hafiz, then you didn't really free the child. Because you got thinking behind him, they're going to finish his hips, then GCSE, then this, then that, then this, this, that, that. Then you didn't really free him. You have to free the kid from everything else. And you say, Sheikh, this is the child, that's it, all I want Quran, Deen, that's it, done. You teach how you want to teach. You plan your lesson based on your student. You judge him. You see how he learns, how he takes, how he understands. Based on that, I'm not interfering in anything. If you can do that, then you will fall under the quality of Maryam's parents. SubhanAllah. Yeah, and I remember a lot of parents in Bangladesh, what they do, they take the child to the boarding madrasa, leave the child with the sheikh, and they say, Sheikh, this is the child, student. I'm leaving him. That's it. You look after him. Once he becomes half as he can go home. The child stays in the madrasa of three years, four years, five years. Some ten years they stay in the Buddhim and they become half as an Ali. You see, so sometimes you have to sacrifice that kid for Allah, purely freed from dunya. So there is no worry and pressure of dunya. So here, the idea was the Maryam has to be kept under some Imam. So all the Imams of those days, they started coming to take Maryam. Now Maryam can't go and stay with any Imam, can she? Maryam is a girl. And Imams are ghair mahram. Ghair mahram means they are allowed to marry her. So now, can she be kept with anyone? Now if it's a boy, it's a different case. Boy can stay with anyone. Yeah? But not Maryam. Maryam is a girl. Maryam will grow up. And once she grows up, Whoever Imam she is staying with, whoever the Imam marries her. So now he has to, she has to be with someone who is secured by Allah Ta'ala. And who can be more secure than a Prophet? Who can be more secure than a Prophet? Who can be more safe than a Prophet? Plus, Zakaria alayhi salatu was was her uncle, her mom's brother. And who can be more secure than an uncle? Mom's brother. Yeah? Mama. Listen. So here, security over security. Allah Ta'ala says, وَكَفَّلَهَا زَكَرِيَّا Zakaria looked after her. She grew up inside the masjid. She had a room on the side of the masjid. She grew up, she used to stay in that room. Zakaria used to look after her every morning, every evening, every day. Like his own child. SubhanAllah. And then, whenever Zakaria used to come in her room, كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَّا الْمِحْرَابَ Whenever Zakaria used to enter in her house, in her room, she used to find big trays of fruits and food in front of her. And he's just Maryam, where is this from? Who gave you this? Because surely not from my house, because if you eat something from my house, I would have known that's this sort of food in my house. So you got something different, where is it from? Look at this, the response of a little child. She goes, it is from Allah Ta'ala. Subhanallah. It is from Allah Ta'ala and Allah Ta'ala feeds whoever He wants. And بحساب, without any counting, without any hisab, he keeps make them, making them eat and giving them provision and rizq. This is little child, Maryam. <coughs> Subhanallah. Now from there you can understand when Allah Ta'ala said, فَتَقَبَّلَهَا Allah Ta'ala accepted her قُبُولْ حَسَنًا And Allah Ta'ala grew her up نَبَاتًا حَسَنًا From there you understood the connection with the ending of the verse. That when she was asked, where is this food from? She said, it is from Allah, and Allah feeds Bahisab whoever He wants. So this child Iman is strong. At the age of six, at the age of five, this child Iman is on Allah Ta'ala. So dear brothers, elders, youngsters, our Iman should be on Allah. 
Allah feeds us. Allah looks after us. Allah provides us. Allah takes care of us. This is the Iman we need to have. And from the story of Maryam, what we learn, and from the story of Ummu Maryam, Maryam's mom, what we learn, that when we go to learn deen, we have to sacrifice dunya. Say inshallah. inshallah. We have to sacrifice mom's love sometimes. Here, Maryam living in the masjid and not staying with mom. So sometimes you might have to go to madrasa and stay with your sheikh, yeah, and you will miss your mom. You will be homesick. But you have to accept that for sake of deen, for sake of Quran. Yeah, your dad might send you to foreign country. For example, Egypt, Medina. I know a kid, he went to Medina, couldn't stay five months. He got homesick and came back. When I asked what happened, he goes, Sheikh, I couldn't do it. I missed my parents. I have to come back. <laughs> no, my dear, you can't do that. <coughs> you can't do that. When you go to learn deen, you have to learn to sacrifice the love of dunya and love of family, love of friends, love of cousins and relatives. It is important. And that's what we learn from the story of Maryam. So a lot of things to learn from there. The parents have to be pious. Then Allah Ta'ala blessed them with their pious child. The child has to be under the care of a pious person. Then child will pick up the piety. Child has to be under a sheikh to pick up the right deen and right tawheed. You cannot just put the child under anyone's care. They're going to pick up wrong things. You have to look after them and always focus on their tawheed, on the belief and faith. That's very important. Once the child's faith is strong, that's it, they are protected from shaitan. May Allah Ta'ala protect us all, protect, protect us all, and protect our children and our generation from shayateen. Say, Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We'll stop here for today, inshallah. I wanted to finish it by 40, but it's gone eight minutes extra. Forgive me, please. Pray any question. Anyone has any question? Quick one. Bismillah. If no question, we'll, we'll finish it. Yes, Sheikh. Bismillah, Adam. You know how you said that the food was from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? Um, was it like previously you, 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 as in like, you know how all food come from Allah or was it like angel that brought it down? Angel brought it down. Yes, but if you if you want if Allah wants to send you without angel, Allah can do that. Allah controls the, the air. Allah controls the weather. Allah controls everything. Allah controls the cloud. Do you see? As soon as it's Allah Ta'ala says the tray, get ready, get full of fruits from Jannah. That automatically fruits will come on the tray and get ready and the tray will come down to the person. This is, it is Allah Ta'ala. So Allah Ta'ala can use means for sending things down like Angel Jibra'il and other angels. And Allah Ta'ala can send it without any means as well. So sometimes there might not be means but still Allah can do things. Always keep your trust in Allah Ta'ala. Okay. Jazakallah. Beautiful question from young man. He said, does the angel bring the food down or does it come by itself? <laughs> Mashallah. It can happen both ways my friend. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm just a bit curious. Um, you said that there was, an, um, uh, there was some khilaf or s between scholars saying that, you know, there's uh, Zakaria alayhi salam was prophet or a... No, not Zakaria. Imran, Imran. 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 Zakaria alayhi salam is a prophet, no doubt. Allah ta'ala called it. Uh, Zakaria is a prophet. Zakaria is a prophet. Yahya is a prophet. Isa is a prophet. There is no doubt in those. Okay? Imran. Imran. The, question, Imran. the question was, what is it that makes qualifies a person, well, obviously after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the prophet's but what is it that qualifies them from prophets to be a prophet? Or? Allah Ta'ala's wahi. Allah Ta'ala's message. Revelation. So they have to have a revolution with them to say that, that Allah Ta'ala sent me a message and Allah Ta'ala chose me as a prophet. Like Isa Alayhi Salaam spoke. He said, Inni Abdullah atani al-kitab wa ja'alani nabiyya. That's the first thing he spoke. He said, I'm a servant of Allah. Allah Ta'ala gave me a book. Allah Ta'ala made me a prophet. That's it. Yeah. So every prophet, they have to have some signs, some proofs. So obviously Allah Ta'ala will give the message. Through the message, Allah Ta'ala choose them as a prophet. But after that, they will get some proofs like mu'jiza, miracles. Yeah. So they will show the miracles and that's, these are the signs of the prophets that Allah Ta'ala chose in them. That's why they are able to do certain things. Okay, inshallah. Yes, let me come back to you. Yes, Adam. Okay, okay. I came across the hadith, and like, I don't know if you've heard of it, but it states that um, the Prophet Muhammad said, surely after he dies, that the world will end. Have you come across the hadith before? Well, world will end. World will end. Yes, of course. World will end shortly after. Yes, so world will end. Yeah, but like, how, how would you 
do you like, because um, he didn't say a time, he just said shortly after. Yes. So Allah Ta'ala said the day of judgment is near in the Quran. In the Sa'ata Qareeb. Qareeb means near. So how near it is, we don't know. Okay? It can be one day, it can be 100 days, it can be one million days. Yeah? But to Allah, Allah Ta'ala says, يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا وَنَرَوْهُ قَرِيبًا They see it far, we see it close. <laughs> so for human calculation, 1400 years is a long period. Or even another 1400 years, let's say from today till Day of Judgment. So it's going to be 1400, 2800 years. 2800 years is a long period for us. Allah Ta'ala says, يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا To human calculation, it's a far. But in Allah's calculation, it's close. Does it make sense? So in Allah's calculation from Adam alayhi salatu wasalam till now, just like one glance. <laughs> Because for Allah, Allah sees the beginning and end. So to Him is nothing, this time period. So it's long in our eyes, do you see? So in that sense, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, after Him, there is Day of Judgment. Yes, after Him, there, there is Day of Judgment. Because there is no more Prophets after Him. Yes. He says some signs. Yes, that come one of that's, that's it. Then, then He gave signs, and those signs will happen. And we will await for those signs, inshallah. Minor signs are happening, major signs are coming slowly, slowly. So may Allah Ta'ala protect us and save us from those major signs. Say, Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Right, any more question or should we go? Yes, Mr. Zakaria. We were talking about you all this time. MashaAllah, you are here, go on. Interest of bank. Keep it. <coughs> Pocket account, yeah, a side account, make, make a saving pot, yeah, you know, in, in some banks it says pots, you can make little, little pots, like holiday, umrah, hajj, you can name it and make small pots on the side. So, make a pot, calling it interest. So, every time interest comes in the month, put it on that pot. When it becomes 30 pounds, 40 pounds, 50 pounds, give it to a poor person, okay? When it's five penny, ten penny, it won't make anything to them. But once it becomes pounds, the worth of few pounds, give it to them, they can buy something and they can use it. Okay? So interest, you can give it to poor people, homeless people, they can take it, no problem. You won't get a reward, but it's their haq, it's their right, it's not yours, it's theirs, their money going to them. Okay, inshallah, that's why I do. So every year, my interest money, it gets to about... 20, 30 pounds every year. So I put them on a pot, on a side pot, and all of them, so for example, this month, my this account might say, oh, you got 4p. That account might say 21p. That account might say 15p. So I collect all of those, put it in the side pot, and then at the end of the year, I get all of those out, give it to the poor people. You can do that, okay, inshallah. Don't eat it. Interest, eating haram, you don't eat it. That's not yours, okay? But put it on a side, give it to the poor people. And that's, for that also, you don't need to close the account. You use the account. Some banks, for example, Barclays, Barclays, they give interest for nothing. You keep money or you don't keep money, they give something at the end of the month. Every month you will see there are some pennies, extra pennies, and that says, that's interest. Yeah. Um, you can also avoid it if I just go in using a bank that doesn't give interest, like payments. Like why, why do you want to stop it? Keep it. Get it. Give it to the poor. Let the poor people use it. Let the poor people use it. If you stop it, they, that's the poor people, they're not going to get their right. So get it, give it to the poor people, don't eat it. Okay, inshallah? It's okay, that's better. That's, I think, according to my understanding, that's a better idea. But if you think that's more comfortable going and stopping it, by all means do that. Go to the bank, tell them, I don't want interest, close it. Assalamu Okay, we'll stop here, inshallah, after go. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Subhanallah bin Hamdi, subhanallah bin Azim. Subhanallah bin Hamdi, gara shudu Allah ilaha illa anta. Nasta'u alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you in the next time. Barakallahu alaikum, mashallah.